Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this undefined scale, caricaturized British Sherman Firefly. Now the model that we have here is built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. However, like I frequently mention in these build videos, I often take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Now the model is predominantly built out of the box. However, this model, I went ahead and made some extra upgrades and changes to it, deviating from its kit out of the box rendition. We'll be going over these additions and modifications as well as reviewing the base starter kit in this video. So stay tuned because there's a lot of cool content coming at you. But before we go ahead with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this model here is the Sherman Firefly, or at least that's what it's attempting to try to pass off as. In actuality, this is a caricaturized Sherman Firefly from the video game World War Tunes. Which means this video falls within the EastCoastArmory.com channel's tradition of being an April Fool's Day build. Now, World War Tunes is an online class-based video game. It takes place during a World War II time frame, but unlike many of the other more super accurate renditions of World War II games, the World War II games utilizes a funky caricaturized art style, much along similar lines to what you see on games like Team Fortress 2. The game has been out for a number of years now, and shortly after the game came out, a line of model kits from the game emerged. The vehicles feature the same caricaturized format like you see on the on-screen graphics in the video game. Now, I personally don't play this game, but apparently it must be very successful and popular because it seems like every year more and more new kits from the video game keep coming out. This Firefly here is included. Now, what's interesting about the art style is that it gives you the look, the feel, and the attitude of the vehicles in question, which one can clearly see by taking one quick glance at this model here. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplies you with. And here's the model at the start of the build. For the base starter kit, I'll be utilizing this Meng caricaturized Sherman Firefly model kit. This kit here was acquired off of Amazon a little while ago, and like I said before, this kit here is a relatively new release from Meng, and of course is part of their ever-growing World War II's caricaturized model lineup. Starting with the model's graphic design, right dead center we have the Firefly itself, with its cartoonish caricaturized type illustration. The rest of the graphic design is typical for the Meng World War II's kits. We have the two diagonal cut lines on either side, Again, for use on shelf display, where if you have more than one of these kits lined up, it has a nice little continuity ribbon to it. Typeface, again, is that fun cartoonish type layout that was used on the other World War II sets. On the side here, we have a sample of what the model looks like built. And again, the rest of the graphic design is basically what one would expect from the other World War II's lineup, including on the back page here we have some screenshots of the kit in-game. Opening up the box, I can now slide out the kit contents. Now just like with all the other World War II sets, the kit is entirely sealed in one vacuum seal bag, which has all of the parts. Now just like with the other World War II's model kits, they are all comprised of injection molded plastic parts, with the only exception being the rubber track bands that we have here. Just like with the other allied kits in the World War II's lineup, the Firefly is molded with this olive green polystyrene material. And the kit design is very similar to the M4A1, which is not too surprising, where we have the the hull, which is in two halves, and we have here the stylized VVSS suspension. Now 
The detailing on the parts is pretty good, considering they are, again, on the simplistic end, but this has to do more with the subject matter as opposed to the actual quality of the moldings themselves. But again, the type of detailing is on par with the other kits on the World War II's lineup. Here we have the turret. The gun, which is a single piece molding. And the remainder of the running gear. And kit components. From the plastic parts, now of course it brings us to the tracks. Again, just like with the other kits, from the lineup, they feature a continuous set of rubber tracks. The tracks themselves appear to be more of an HVSS pattern with their dual chevron type design. But again, for the subject matter, it's perfectly fine. Further down takes us to the decal sheet, which is a little cart of water slide decals. Same quality as they appear to be on the other Wolvertune kits, as well as the other Meng kits in general. And of course, the instructions are just like the other ones in their lineup. Very simple, very colorful with the color scheme. And here you can see the CAD drawings laid out and how the kit assembles together. All in all, should make for a nice, quick, and fun little build. Starting with the model suspension, all the components that you see here are stocked with the kit and were built out of the box with no mods really to mention. The one thing I do want to point out though is that the suspension does have a lot of nooks and crannies being a Sherman and because of which it would best to pre-paint these pieces prior to the assembly of the bogey housing here. Same could also be said for not only the other Sherman in the World War II's lineup but also their M5 Stewart as well. Now in case anybody was wondering, with the way the model is designed, the running gear does have the ability to be pushed in that if you put the model on the ground and push it with your hand, the track will roll and the wheels will spin. However, once the model is built and painted to the way you see it here, you don't want to go ahead and keep doing that because the paint will start chipping off of the running gear and it'll start hurting the look of the build. However, if anyone is looking at one of these builds and that's something you might want to be interested in, these builds do have that capability. One more thing I want to touch upon with the lower hull is with the way the unit is assembled. On the model, there are two halves as well as the rear and front portion. And once you assemble them, you are going to have some seams. One of them will run across like this and the other two are on the two ends. Now on this model here, I went ahead and deleted all that with a little bit of bodywork and some sandpaper. But keep in mind, this is something that's really optional. Since it is on the bottom portion of the vehicle, it's not visible. So if you don't have any experience with working with more advanced type modeling techniques like seam removals and other sort of things along those lines, you don't have to worry about that for this build. From the track, this now takes us to the front detailing. Here you can see the hedge cutter, which is integrally molded into the front transmission housing. The detailing is pretty good and of course has that stylized cartoon shape along with the rest of the build and it does work for this model. Also the transmission cover is mirroring that of the three-piece transmission housing, which is different from the other Meng Sherman, which has the all-in-one cast type transmission. The three-piece would be common on an M4A4 that was then turned into a Firefly by the British. From the transmission cover, it takes us to the spare tracks. Now there would be provisions for mounting the spare tracks on these two locations here found on the real Sherman Firefly. Directly next to it is a bow machine gun that does have a nice little pivoting feature to it. However, keep in mind that on a real Firefly, this section here, the crew compartment was deleted in order to hold more ammunition for the 17 pounder gun that the Fireflies were up gunned with. From there, you can see the headlights. Basically assembled out of box, no mods needing to be made there. And here you can see the travel lock, which is found in this section here, and they molded it in the up position. Moving to the rear, here you can see the rear detailing, such as the engine hatch, as well as the rear storage box. Now this is a British modification made for these Shermans, and it's not uncommon to see these on British vehicles, along with this other bit of equipment here. From there you can see the taillights. They are a lot smaller and more finely molded compared to the one found on the M4A1 kit from Meng. And these pieces here are nicely detailed out of the box. 
From there, this takes us now to the engine deck, and this is where I started deviating from what the stock kit supplies you with. Now, the way the kit is designed, you have a lot of equipment like bags and boxes and other cargo, which would be mounted to other pegs that are integrally molded into the top deck. Now, this was never something I like to do on my builds. In fact, if you look at any of my builds from 116 to 135 or 16, you won't see crew equipment on my models. It's just not something that I'm into. So I wasn't gonna go ahead and break my tradition on this guy here. So in order to omit these fittings, I had to do some body work to the rear section here of the model. The large sections that are cut into the top deck, which are used as alignment holes for the equipment were plugged up with plastic and then blended over with the body work. Also, because of that, I actually have to add this little cup line that we have here, which separates the vehicle from the spare box. With the way the kit is molded, it is all one continuous piece, because keep in mind, back here is where all the stuff goes that I just mentioned. From the rear deck now takes to the hull sides, and a similar procedure was done with the removal of the cutouts for mounting of equipment. Once the bodywork was done, it makes for a nice seamless look. Now, you'll also see here the detailing of the houseboat camouflage system. For those who might not know this, the Firefly had this system device where you have these rails and a bunch of arms come out, and this allows you to hook up some kind of a camouflage netting type system. It's one of those features that's a really unique one and specific one to the British Firefly. Now, the ones here on the model are very stylistic and are just a simple piece of strip with a loop in it, which definitely does not look anything like the original one, but again, for the subject matter at hand, it does the job just fine. They do have them on both sides, and these are supplied with the kit. Moving up there now takes to the turret, and the turret has also some modifications made to it. Now, starting with what the turret gives you, we have here this box that's found on each side. These are kit supplied, as are the radio box and the extra counterweight which is present on the Shermans because of the long gun barrel of the 17 pounder. What I went ahead and added were some more details to the turret sides. Now just like with the hull sides there were some more cutouts found here on the sides of the turret in order to affix more crew storage. Rather than going with that route I went ahead and deleted those sections and replace them with other types of detailing. On this side of the turret here, we have these four. Now these are found on the real Sherman Firefly, only there's a few more of them, but they are found in the same location. These ones here, I basically tried to mirror as much as possible the cartoonish aspect of the build, and so you can see with their funky proportions. These were just made out of a piece of floor wire that were drilled into the side of the turret and just fitted. But the most unique amount of detailing that I added to this build is on this section that we have right here with this cluster. Now probably one of my favorite modifications that the British made to their tanks was with the smoke grenade launching system. The device that the British had utilized a modified Lee Enfield bolt action rifle action but was modified to only fire smoke grenades. The rear section was the action of the rifle where it consisted of the bolt, the trigger, and the magazine. The buttstock was removed and in, for the barrel we had this gigantic canister. The system would use blanks but still retain that bolt action function and would be fired from inside the tank via a lanyard. Now in order to fabricate this, it is all comprised of plastruct sections. The bulkhead here is just a strip the barrel sections are plastruck tube that I went ahead and cut and mounted in different weird angles to keep up with the caricature nature of the build. And for the receivers, I just utilized a plastic plastruck block. Now, with the way they're painted, you notice the bottom sections are painted to look like wood, which would be found on the real Lee Enfield action, and the top parts would have been metal. By painting it this way, this really does give the piece a little bit of an extra kick. From the smoke grenades, this now brings us to the remainder of the turret detailing. Starting with the 17-pounder, the component is built totally out of the box, and one thing nice about the main kit is that it's a nice, stiff type system, which is great because this prevents the barrel from drooping, which is a common occurrence with vehicles with long gun barrels like the one you see here. The other details found on the turret, we have a loader's hatch, which is molded in, along with some other turret odds and ends and even a 50 caliber machine gun mount, which is just like the one found on the other Meng World War II Sherman. 
Here we have the antenna base well, but rather than the antenna being mounted here, they went ahead and fitted to the other antenna base section, which is on the rear portion of the turret. Now, just like with the other Mang Sherman, the commander's cupola hatches are separate and can open and close. Although it's a little tricky to do on camera, getting the hatches open are actually pretty easy to do on this vehicle. The hinges are nicely designed and do do a good job in keeping the hatch in place, but also having the ability to have them be functional. Now I want to point out that just like with the other World War II's builds, this model here does also feature the very tight tolerances on the details. What I mean by that is when it comes time to inserting the details to their appropriate locations, the amount of material on the peg is going to be slightly larger than the amount of space found on the corresponding slot. Because of this, installing some of the details like the tracks and the tools for that matter are going to require a bit of hand fitting. I presume the reason why these men kits do this is for, I guess, ease of assembly. It, they try to make it, I guess, like a snap together where you don't need glue to install the parts. But by doing this, you can cause breakage to some of these details by the amount of force required in order to push the plastic out of the way in order to get the piece fully seated. One tip I recommend for anyone who's working on any of these World War II's builds is with a little bit of sandpaper or a nail file or a needle file of some sort to remove just a little bit amount of material from the mounting pegs. With the tolerances opened up, the pieces will be able to go into their appropriate locations with a lot less effort, which will make for an easier build and less of a chance of you running into the risk of breaking something during the installation. Moving towards the paint and the markings, the model is painted with a two-tone late ETO camouflage scheme, which would include black bands painted over the olive drab. Now, to my viewers out there who have a really keen eye, you'll probably notice that this paint scheme is identical to the one that I did on a radio-controlled 1-6 scale Armortech Sherman 5C Firefly that I did a couple years ago. That model is painted with the exact same paints as this guy here. And yes, that also includes the all-important countershading here found on the 17-pounder's gun barrel. It's a bit of a nod to that build that I did a little while ago. Now, the markings on this build are the ones that were supplied with the kit and the water slide decals are a really good quality which is something that has been a common occurrence on all these Mang World War II's kits. They went on and lacquered on without any problems. One change that I did make to the markings though is with the location of some of them, namely this little ID code that we have here on either side. With the way the model is designed when you have the equipment suspended from the side of the hull, this little ID number needs to be located in a different location. However, just like on the armor tech that I did, the British utilize the marking in this location over here along this leading edge, and I just added it in this spot right here. This, of course, would not be possible if you're following the kit out of the box due to the luggage that I mentioned before. At the end of the day, I'm really happy in how this build turned out. These World War II builds always do turn out very nice and build into nice pieces. But unlike the other builds like I mentioned before where I generally stayed within the confines of the kit, with this one here I definitely went ahead and broke out of that mold giving the model a little bit more of a personal touch. Now for skill level and recommendation, this model here can be built by just about any individual. From a person who's never touched a plastic model kit in their life to an individual who has built a bunch of plastic model kits in all sorts of different scales and genres. They really are a user-friendly kit to build and definitely one that has a very wide audience to them. These models can be built by a person who just wants to have a nice playable toy, maybe for their kid, or someone who wants to have something a little bit more unique and add it in their collection. Now, of course, for recommendations, anyone who's a fan of the World War II's video game and is looking for some merch is definitely going to enjoy this build over here. Another person who enjoyed this model would be anyone who's really a Sherman fan and want to have a nice little unique addition to their collection. Not to mention any other model tank fan in general. These models here make fantastic gifts for any person who's into plastic modeling. These models here build up very well. They are also very quick to produce 
and are still relatively affordable. Although I will say that the more newer releases of these kits have been a little bit more costly compared to their earlier renditions. Having said that though, these models are still more than affordable enough for the general public. Overall, you just can't go wrong with adding one or more of these kits to your collection. And because there are so many vehicle types, they tend to become very addictive and tend to add up in your collection very quickly. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for this undefined scale, caricaturized British Sherman Firefly. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it small scale model showcase videos like this guy over here, or the larger scale project update videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been posted on the channel in the past. Finally, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.